Hey, hey, hey again. So, number five. Five. Number five. Um, and we're just down in Helaman in verse seven. So, it kind of skips for this week. We haven't even covered anything in 12. Uh, and there's some really good stuff in 12. Uh, I'm going to mention specifically verses 3, 6, 24, and 26. That's what I've got marked. Yeah. Um, so I, I particularly liked those ones. Uh, five is really good too. Actually, I should probably mark that about how quick people are lifted up to pride and how it just, it just explains sort of the pride cycle moving around. B, uh, verse 37, I actually worked out the time from there, from back at the beginning of this, where it said they had a little pride. This is now a lot of pride, and that's 13 years. That's a 13 years. That's not a lot of time to go from oh, just a little pride to complete sin and wickedness of pride. Because this isn't proud like, oh, you did really good at school, son. I'm so proud of you. Not that kind of pride. Pride isn't tearing other people down so you can feel better pride. This is what we're talking about. That's the pride cycle pride. Uh, I've got a fancier house and I'm not going to share anything that I have with you. That pride. Okay, so. That took 13 years. That's not a lot. So, yeah, that's the end of verse chapter 11. So, um, chapter 12 is a really good one. So please read it. But we're just going to finish with 11, 7. So, chapter 11, 7. So, this is the same as we were before. They're about to have a famine. Um, and it humbles a bunch of them. And not all of them though. But and the, the Gadantum robbers just continued to cause havoc and eventually went away from the um famine place. So gave them a little break and then come back and cause a whole lot more and they just don't go away until the complete destruction of the Nephite, as we talked about last week, that it will tear the entire which is what Mormon said when he compiled it, he said this will be the destruction of the entire Nephite people. Which is sad. Um that the Gideon from robbers can do that, so you know, I'm gonna learn from this and don't let it happen to us. Okay, so anyway, verse 7, we'll get there. It says, And it came to pass that the people saw that they were about to perish by famine, and they began to remember the Lord their God. Ah, oh, look at that. We're about to die. Oh, we remembered suddenly what Heavenly Father told us. Okay. And they began to remember the words of Nephi, because Nephi had told them this would happen. Um, so, when you get stirred up to remembrance, think about that. What's God spoken to you that you need to remember? And what have you called to remembrance? Like, what have you sort of gone, oh, yeah, that's right. I was supposed to do this. Or, oh, that's right. I should be going and doing that. Have I done everything this month? Oh, I forgot my ministry. And you get to the end of the week and you're like, oh, it's Friday. Which, if you do it day by day, then this is Friday. And I am filming on a Friday. And you get to Friday and you're like, I haven't even started reading Come Follow Me. And oh my gosh, it's too much. So, you know, these are little things I'm talking about. There can be bigger things too. I'm just picking on some little things. So, you could get called to remembrance. What is that? What's your call to remembrance? What are you being called to remember? Um, but don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, God and Jesus, Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, they know you by name. They are never unaware of your pain, trials, tribulations and circumstances. They see, hear and answer and deliver. So if you're in a situation where you're being called to remembrance and you're going, oh no, it's awful, pray about it. Because they will heal, hear you. They will help you. You've got to accept their help though. You can't be closed off from their help. This is part of the remembrance process. Again, not leaning to your understanding. Centering yourself in Christ. And be open to that uh, help that they will give you. It's not always how you think it's going to come or how you want it to look like. So you know, be open to it. Uh, and it's a hard thing to do. It really is. I'm still working on that myself. However, they will always deliver you. Uh, now, I've got another really cool quote here from Elder Eyring. And these are both from the same talk. There's two quotes, I think. So I thought I'd mention the talk. It's called My Peace I Leave With You. And it's from April 2017 conference. 
Elder Irene does this, and our President Irene does this uh, talk, and it's it's actually a really beautiful talk, and there's so many good words in there about one remembering, but that um, having peace spoken to your soul, um, to encourage you to keep going forward. Like it's a really loving talk. So you know, if you're feeling just a bit which I think a lot of us are right now, and this is probably why I was drawn to, drawn to this talk, but just that if you're feeling that kind of disparagement and that, you know, I just need a little bit more right now, um, go, go listen to this talk, go read this talk, it's a really good one. So my piece I leave with you from April 2017, President Nairi, totally recommend it. Uh, but the quote from that talk for this particular scripture that I tied in with, says the spirit will speak peace to your soul he will urge you forward in faith and he will bring back the memory of those times when you felt the light and love of Jesus Christ so that's part of the remembering is to remember when you felt that goodness of Jesus Christ and that you want to get back there uh, it's part of why we don't like being here in this mortal realm because we remember being somewhere better and we want to be there again and nothing's ever going to be as good as that because it can't in this life but it's going to be and that's part of that hope that we have to have as part of living the gospel so that's another whole topic that we could go into hope and joy however um think of this one when has god spoken to you and remember so we're talking remembering remembering so if you go back remembering is an action not just a thought process it's actually a participation of turning one's heart to God and centering yourself in Jesus Christ. And again, which I love to say again, to keep the terms of your covenant. Because I think that is key. That's really what the remembering does, is to remind you to keep the terms of your covenants that you made. The sacred promises that you have with Heavenly Father. Well, I'm going to leave it there for this week. That's us. Yay, we're done. Um, hopefully you really enjoyed this week's reading. It gets really good. The rest of Helaman, I think, is... I, think that's, I know they've broken it into two lots. The whole Samuel the Lamanite thing. So we get the little bit of build-up of Samuel and then the Samuel week. So, um, yeah, Samuel's right next week. He's 13 through 15. So it's good stuff. I think that's... Yeah, and then there's some Helaman after that before you get into 3rd Nephi and then Christ comes. It's exciting. So prepare yourself for Samuel the Lamanite because it's a good one. And I'll be doing that, uh, and you'll see that next week. Okay. Well, have a good weekend. Bye, y'all.